Greetings and kingdom blessings. Uh, this is Kevin Bailey with Touch of the Master Healing Ministries International in the great city of Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, I'm going to give this a little bit of time to build. Thank God for all of you. God bless you. Uh, as you are coming on, please like and share the video. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to talk about a topic that's not very popular within the body of Christ today. And my question that I pose on today is, can you be a believer and racist at the same time? All right? Just hold that thought. Can you be a believer in Jesus and racist at the same time? Amen. Real quick, uh, if you would like to sow, you can at the end of the broadcast. Uh, if you would like to do that at touch of the master HMI.org. We appreciate that. Also, I want to talk about my book. This is rediscovering spiritual warfare. And uh, what I talk about is how many believers are casually uh, have become casualties uh, because they don't know how to fight. And spiritual warfare is looked down on in many churches, even deliverance is looked down on. But in this book, I bring some truths out uh, that establish a foundation for warfare uh, and also that establish a, uh, a foundation and the believer's position in the kingdom, all right, as far as warfare. So as you are coming on, please like, share, and subscribe, and thank God for all of my YouTube subscribers as well. Please like, share, and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, wherever you're coming in from, please put your city on there that you are coming in and joining the live from. Many are not familiar uh, with this because usually uh, with this broadcast that I'm doing from the ministry page, uh, because I'm where usually and have been doing deliverance for months on Sunday. But I want to talk about this, and I'm going to try not to be long. I don't own the rights to this music that is playing also. And let me cut this music off, and we're going to go right into this. Amen? So again, thank you for joining me on today. And I want to talk about uh, the cross, what Jesus done. All right? And my question to you on today is, did Jesus die for the superiority of any race or any mankind. Did he die for any race to be superior? Is my question to you. All right. And the reality, well, I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is he did not die for a particular race. And I want to expose this devil because many that are in Christ, uh, of all ethnicities, we're guilty of it. We have our demonic perceptions about uh, a particular race. Um, and even with uh, our churches, we are still not worshiping together. And we have uh, African-American churches, uh, Hispanic church, Caucasian church. And many a times... Um, Many a times leaders of different ethnicities don't even invite uh, someone of a different culture or color, a culture, culture or color to their functions. And this racism demon is not just worldwide. I know it's systemic uh, in society. And it's a problem. Many of you know, well, Apostle, where you've been at? Why haven't you said anything? This systemic racism has been an issue for 400 years, okay? But this same spirit, it is antiquated. It is within the church, okay? In Acts chapter 13, you just go and look at it in verse 2. There were five different ethnicities within that church of Antioch, all right? Just go and look at it in your quiet time. It wasn't, a, uh, and myself, I don't like the ideal of a black church, Hispanic, Latino, uh, uh, European, Greek, wh whatever. I don't like the ideal of that. I believe that if you are in Christ, that we are all heirs of Jesus Christ. We are all sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, and you cannot be in Christ I'm going to go to some scriptures in a minute. You cannot be in Christ 
and profess to be a believer and be racist. Okay? You have missed it. And what you need is deliverance. Okay? That's what you need. And let me tell you this. God doesn't anoint only one particular race. So when you pray, you fast, and you have suffered, does he say, okay, well, this one is a certain color. I'll give him this anointing. The anointing has no color connected with it. It's God's spirit. It's his power. It's governed by Christ. And you really did nothing to deserve it. Amen. But when he shed his blood on Calvary, it was for all of mankind. So this systemic devil, uh, yes, and some say, oh, well, it's the Caucasian man's religion. Listen, I know the Bible was used to abuse slaves, but listen, there were Irish slaves too. There were many that were slaves. I I'm not going to go into a lot of the history, but I want to expose this devil today. All right. We're still not worshiping together. And when we come together, we don't trust each other because of what we've been taught. And I'm going to share this Two, racism is not something you're born with. It is something that you are taught and is connected with hate and ignorance and bigotry. All right. Uh, another synonym for that is partiality. We're all one. And listen, if you're in Christ, you're red. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. And guess what? You should be judged by your, and Martin Luther King talked about this, intelligence, character, uh-huh, education, and morality, your morals. You should be judged by that, not uh, by the color of your skin. And some that, I don't have a black son, but I have a black daughter. I have nephews, nieces that I have to pray for. Uh, because the very people that were put in authority to come and help uh, seems to uh, have a warrior mentality and that is killing uh, African-American and many times Latino and Hispanic men, which are considered a minority in society. Uh, the numbers are, it's unbearable, it's ridiculous when we look at that. Since 2013, it's ridiculous. There's over a thousand African-American men that are killed and we face a 14 to 16 percent chance of being killed when we come in contact with uh, law enforcement or any level of authority or being in prison. I won't even go there and I'll share that with you because I do prison ministry. Yeah, I do deliverance in there. I do prison ministry. Okay. So. Uh, I'm going to get back to where I'm at, but this, uh, back to my topic, this partiality, this biases, uh, this prejudices, you know what? It's a demon. All right. And for those you are watching, if you're on YouTube, wherever you are, I pray that the Lord will convict you and that you'll submit to deliverance. And of course we offer that. I'll tell you about that in the end. But it's deliverance time. This is a spirit of hate. Being a Christian and being in Christ does not promote hate. The Bible says that God is love. He's love, not hate. So if you're in any faith-based religion that promotes hate, okay, and that promotes uh, bigotry or racism of any form, then you need to consider deliverance and leaving that particular faith, because it's a devil. I know, I, t I talk about the hard things, I know. Uh, many of you don't want to hear this, and listen, it don't even matter who comes on to the live, amen? I don't do that uh, for pop, I don't do videos or lives uh, for popularity, I only do them when I'm inspired by God, and this is the first day that I've had a chance to even do a, uh, a video from our ministry. Amen? But we've got to talk about it. And listen, pulling down statues, coming against all the stuff that uh, of modernized slavery and, and the reality, it was never abolished. It was just organized. I'll, I'll leave that with you. I'm going to leave it alone. But taking those statues down mean nothing unless man changes his heart. 
There has to be a heart change. Oh, I know y'all not with me on today. And I don't profess to be a politician. I'm a man of God. And I have to expose this devil. I, I'm not in agreement with Black Lives Matter because of some of the core beliefs I'm not in agreement with. Okay, I'm just being honest with you and the core values. And listen, there is nothing even stated in scripture that although the country to an extent was built on Christian values and principles, that the president even has to be a Christian. I know I'm wrecking some of y'all house today. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm wrecking y'all y'all house today. It's not this scripture that, that says it. I know some of you are getting mad at me. Some of you are going to lead the life, and it's okay. But the reality of the whole thing is, uh, in, the, in spite of the despicable uh, uh, things that have been done uh, to blacks, whites, listen, the bottom line, no matter what color you are, the Bible says that thou shall not murder. And that if you take a life, you should give your life. We, of course, we demand justice because you have to think about it. What if it was one of your family members? You're going to want justice. I, some say, well, get rid of the police. Imagine what the world would be like without police. At some point, you may need the police. What are you going to do? Imagine this. Oh, I know y'all don't want to hear that today. We're in a war. Yes, I understand that there is a systemic uh, racism. I, I understand that. But I'm going to share with you what the Bible says about it. Okay? In Galatians 3 and 28, I'm through with it, and I'm going to describe to you. Matter of fact, let me describe partiality to you before we go and read some scriptures uh, concerning it. Amen? Let me read. Partiality means a state of being partial, favorable, prejudice, bias, favoring one person or a side over another, or others bias or believing that you're more supreme than the other. That's the meaning of it. All right. Let's read Galatians 3.28. Look what it says. Well, let's read verse 27. Uh, Galatians 3 and 27, it says, For as many as you as were baptized, in, baptized, baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Does it say that you put on a certain race? Was that identified when you were baptized into Christ? No. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you all are one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according, heirs according to the promise. It does not, scripture does not support a particular race being superior to another. And I'm telling you today, it's a devil. Are y'all with me today? Listen, faith in Christ shall transcend these differences and make and it makes all believers one in Christ. So make sure you do not impose distinctions that Christ has removed because all believers are his heirs. So no one is more privileged than the other or no one is more superior than than the other, if you're in Christ. The Bible also says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 that you are a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. So if you were that way, racist or have biases or whatever it is that you have, before you come to Christ, the Bible says that those old things must pass away and new things are to come, and that you are new creation in Christ. So you are connected with a kingdom. There is no room for biases, partiality, favoritism in the kingdom. Are y'all with me today? 
Oh, I know they said, yeah. And and I'm not mad at anybody. I haven't been hiding. I, I, well, also, we put the book in Spanish. I'll talk to y'all about that at the end. So some are going to say, Pastor, you angry. When I seen those events, I was angry. I was disappointed. I was sad. I cried. I, just in unbelief. The incidents that have been happening with the very ones that's supposed to be protecting, guarding, and serving us. But listen, even in my own race, we kill one another. Protests when we kill one another the same way. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm wrecking somebody's house and theology uh, today. Listen. Natural, natural inclination to feel uncomfortable around people who are different from you. And you gravitate those to those who are similar to you. But when we allow our differences to separate us from our believers, we are disregarding clear biblical teaching. So we should make it a point to seek out and appreciate other people, races, ethnicities. Are y'all listening to me? us or our friends you might find out that you have a lot in, com in common with them I places regions and i have friends of different ethnicities i have sons and daughters many parts of the world they are different ethnicities all right we can't say that we're in christ uh, but hold on to uh hatred or um, even some, I ain't going to even talk about that, or go to altars of darkness and, uh, oh my God, yeah. Freemasonry, Catholicism, I mean, listen, look, enough's enough. I'm, let, me, let me read these scriptures. That's a whole nother teaching. Let's go to John chapter 7 and 24. John chapter 7, and I'm going to be finished in a minute. The Bible says this in John 7 and 24. It says, do not judge according to appearance or the color of a person's skin. Look what it, you, so I, I'm just going to interpret that. You know, do not judge according to what? Appearance. But judge with righteous judgment. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? Acts chapter 17 and 26. Let me get these scriptures to y'all and stir some of you up. And I just bind that racist devil, that biased spirit. I bind it in Jesus' name. Because you cannot be in Christ and hold those erroneous beliefs or inclinations about a particular race. God's whole ideal was for us to be one. And together. Amen. Remember in John chapter 17. He prayed that we would all be one. Not a denomination. So that old sectarian devil is out there too. Because a person don't believe what you believe. You shut them down. Oh I know. Look what it says in Acts chapter 17 and 26. Look what it says. Uh, let's read verse 25. Nor is he worshiped with men's hands, although he need as though he needed anything, since he gives life, gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he is made from one blood, every nation of men, to dwell on all the face of the earth, and is determined their pre-appointed times and the bounding areas, boundaries of of their dwellings. That's Acts chapter 17 and 26. He gives life and breath to all. And the Bible also says that we are created. I don't care what happened to uh, Floyd. Uh, well, I care. But listen, the reality is George Floyd, Gar Eric Garner, Trayvon, all of them were created in God's image. And there's more. But they were created in God's image. Romans 2 and 11 says this. Listen. Uh, let's read verse 10. 
It says, but glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good. To the Jew first and also to the Greek, for there is no partiality. Y'all see that? There is no partiality with God. Romans 10. I mean, Romans 2. Look at verse 10 and then 11. Amen? Amen. All right, let's look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 12. Romans chapter 10 and verse 12. It says, for there is no distinction. Um, there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Amen. He never... Uh, uh, superiorize a particular race or desire for a particular race to be in bondage or slavery to another. Jesus never operated that way. Are y'all with me today? Acts, are y'all listening to me? Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Y'all stay with me. Acts chapter 10, and I'm going to wrap it up. Acts chapter 10, 34 to 35. Look what it says. I bind that devil, all right? I bind the spirits of racism in Jesus' name. Amen? The Bible says in Acts 10, 35, Paul, I mean, Peter goes to um, the Gentiles' house, Cornelius. It was customary for them not to even connect. And some of you, uh, if y'all remember the story uh, there, uh, Peter at that time, they accused, Peter accused Paul of watering down the gospel and all this stuff in Galatians 2, 11 through 13 and didn't even want to eat with him and, and didn't want to face him. He wanted to stay with the Jews because Peter was an apostle to the Jews. Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. All right. All right, let's go. Acts chapter 10, 34 through 35. It says, Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. I perceive that God shows no partiality. Remember, I define partiality to you. All right? But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. That is in Acts chapter 10, 34 through 35. Let's go to, um, uh, uh, let me read back uh, Acts chapter 10, 2 and verse 28. Let me read, let me go up and read 28. Verse 28. It says, then he said to them, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Y'all see this? Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked them, for what reason have you sent me? And guess what? Peter could have missed the blessing of connecting with Cornelius if he had held on to that partiality and the biases. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah, connected with race. All right, y'all stay with me. Let's go to uh, the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Y'all stay with me. I'm going to finish it up in just a minute. And we all need to be praying for the body of Christ. Amen. Concerning this, we are still not worshiping together. All right. Verse 7, it says, but I, but um, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7 says, says, but the Lord said to Samuel, I do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as a man sees. For a man looks at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. See, this is a heart issue. 
The heart needs to change. This is in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. 1 John chapter 2, 9 through 11. So God doesn't look at skin colors. Or, are y'all looking at me? Or the appearance of man, their stature, none of that. Oh, y'all stay with me. I know it's not popular for some of them. I know I'm stirring some of the religious devils up, but it's okay. I hope you, I hope you brought your devils on and you log in today. Amen. And bring your devils with you. 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. Let's look at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 9. Let's look at it. Y'all ready? I'm going to read. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light. And there is no cause for stumbling in him, but he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. First John 2, 9 through 11. Matthew chapter 5 and 9 says, blessed are the peacemakers. If you are in Christ and you are son of God, man or woman, you're, you're, your whole ideal, uh, should, the whole ideal should be peace. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 9 that blessed are the peacemakers for other son of the gods. And some of us, we have these pictures. I'm just going to share this. I'm not going to go into the history. Go and do the research. All right? Go and do the research. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. So some of us that have those biases and that are racist, what is it that you're going to do? Because the Bible says here, this is, this is how Jesus is depicted and described in Scripture. It says, his head and hair were like wool and as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were fine like brass, like brass, brass, the color of brass. So Jesus had color to him. And as if it refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. See, some are going to be struggled by that. If his hair is, is as wool, skin as brass, feet like brass, are y'all with me? And by no way am I trying to promote a particular race. But what are you going to do? Because some of you are looking at those pictures of Sasari Borgia. Of, of Borgia. I'm sorry. Sasari Borgia is many of the picture, pictures that y'all have of Jesus. Many of you that depict him in a white image. That is, uh, that is uh, Pope the sixth son. That is the Pope. Yeah. Alexander. And listen. Um, it's uh, Pope Alexander the sixth. And the painting was by Leonard da Vinci. Y'all catch that later. Y'all remember da Vinci code? That's from the Roman church. And listen. All the pictures of Jesus that was painted were thrown out and thrown away. And Cesare Borgia was the one who posed for the image of Jesus for the Church of Rome. Uh, Y'all catch you later. Go and study. All right. There was a young lady, and I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to let y'all go. There was a young lady by the name of Kennedy Mitchum that was in Missouri that wrote Miriam Webster and asked them to change because she had proof that the, the interpretation of uh, racism was incorrect in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And they agreed to change it because it, it should be uh, say that prejudices, biases, favorable. I won't talk about nepotism 
uh, where they kind of keep it in the family. In the church, we have church mafias, and we keep it in the family. But Kennedy Mitchum told them, I don't know if they updated it now. I don't know if they updated it. But she wrote Miriam Webster and said, hey, the definition of racism is wrong. You didn't add that it's systemic, that it's partiality. It believes that one race is superior to another. She added all the content and sent it to them. And they are agreeing to change it. I don't know if they updated it yet, but her name is Kennedy Mitchell. She said that it was wrong. Amen. But racism is also a prejudice, a discrimination, antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on a belief. Some of us have our own uh, inclinations and demonic perceptions because of what our cultures have taught us about a particular race. Oh, I know somebody's getting deliverance today. The belief that all members of each race po uh, possess characteristics and abilities to a specific race, are, are y'all with me? Or that it should be superior is bondage. So if you need deliverance from this, those who are watching it, those that are watching the replay, email us at info at touchofthemasterhmi.org. And we will set a time to pray with you concerning this. No matter what ethnicity you are, if you're in Christ, you are heir to Christ. And all of us are entitled to the same benefits, being in Christ. So if you have came to Christ and you still withhold those same values and beliefs, uh, that one is superior than another, you need deliverance, okay? And I'm telling you, it's the devil, and God that we serve does not promote hate. And he doesn't look at every race or, or, or race as superior to another. I've given you all the scriptures, go and, those that will listen to the replay, go back and listen to it. I've given you all the scriptures, I'm going to pray. If you need deliverance, email us at info at touchofthemasterhmi.org. If what I've shared with you has been a blessing to you and you want to sow, go to touchofthemasterhmi.org where you can sow into the ministry if you would like to. Amen. Remember about the book, the new book. Remember, it's available on the website. It's $12. Shipping and handling is $5. It'll be $17. Invest it in yourself and go to war, okay? All right, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing, and that you have blessed your people on today. In Jesus' name, I bind the spirits connected with partiality, racism, biases, prejudices. I bind that spirit, and I declare that those who will tune in even later in Jesus' name, will get the deliverance. I pray that you would deliver them from this spirit of hate and these learned behaviors in Jesus' name, and these biases in Jesus' name, this partiality, this favoritism, these demonic biases. I pray that you would deliver in Jesus' name. And I decree that the power of your blood delivered and saved all in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for the great gift of your son, Jesus. And those that even don't know you in the pardon of their sins, I pray that they are here this message and they would receive you in Jesus' name. And that many in the body of Christ will receive deliverance from this demonic spirit and that we may worship together. I bind the spirit of segregation in Jesus' name. I bind that spirit in Jesus' name and being separate. And I declare in Jesus' name that we are one in Jesus' name and that we will no longer be segregated. We will no longer worship separately. I pray for unity. I pray for peace. I pray that we will understand one another, reach out to each other of different ethnicities and receive all, especially if we're in Christ. And so I thank you 
and bless you now. I release angelic hosts in Jesus' name with battle axes and weapons of war to break you free from this demonic bondage, from this slavery spirit, from this oppressive spirit. These spirits of hate, I bind them and I declare that they go in Jesus' name. And I decree the love of God is released. The love of God and no longer Will you judge by partiality or the appearance of men in Jesus' name? And Lord, we thank you, we love you, and bless you and praise you. And I bind the spirits of stubbornness, bitterness in Jesus' name, and even some by bully by other race. I bind the bullying spirit. I bind the Christian mafia spirits in the name of Jesus that only caters to one race and never brings in other races into their ministry or connect with others. I bind that spirit. It's separation. It's discord. It's disunity. I bind it in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, whatever part of the world, I bind this spirit in Jesus' name. Regionally, nationally, internationally, I bind it. I break the power in Jesus' name. And I bind the spirits of fear connected with the pandemic. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I believe that even racism is a health crisis. It's a mental health crisis. I pray for deliverance. I pray that you would break it off of your people of all ethnicities and colors. In Jesus' name. We are one when we're in Christ. And we all bleed red blood. And we bleed bleed the blood of your precious son, Jesus. Because we're in Christ. And that is the blood that forgave us. So we look to everyone. As red when they're in Christ. And we give you praise for that now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I have to run right now. Thank all of you for joining me. Remember, if you are needing personal deliverance, go to info at touchofthemasterhmi.org. Set an appointment. Amen. Remember that the book's available. And if you would like uh, to, uh, like I said, give a seat, just go to touchofthemasterhmi.org. If you feel led to. I'm not saying that you have to. Amen. I pray that this blessed you on today and that it brings a measure of deliverance on all those who will listen and those even on the replay that will listen. All right. God bless all of you. Have a great rest of the day and a great week.